Hi, today we're going to learn what is a loop in a programming environment and how to use one as a programmer. So we will talk about a basic loop for any programming language. So let's get to work. So what is a loop? In general, a loop is something that starts from a position and after circulating a path, it ends up at the same position. So as a programmer, we can use a loop in a programming environment so that a bunch of commands or codes can be executed for a certain number of times or until a certain condition is met. So as you can see, this is also a loop. So if we define a loop like this and put in between a bunch of codes, it will execute those codes whatever number of times we define that loop to run. So this command, if you see, it will run like this and this and this until we define it for a certain condition. So inside there might, might be instructions to execute and after a certain loop is completed, after a pass, it will check whether the condition is met or not. If the condition is true, then it will continue to the next loop and execute the instructions again. And if the condition is false, it's going to exit the loop and it will not further execute any other commands. Let's see an example with this loop command. So here is a loop and let's say we have a command like this. So this is a disp command, which is to display this number one. And we will run this loop at certain period of time so that this one number should be displayed in our output. This can be displayed in any programming language. I'm just talking about in general. So let's just say I will have a variable counter and set it to zero. And now I'll see the output on the right. So as we run this, we can see that we have one loop and the counter becomes one. So whatever we define is that the counter variable will increase after one pass of the loop and then it will output whatever instructions we have given it inside the loop. So after counting one loop, it will output the variable one in the output window one time. Now, if we see that, uh, if we uh, see that the condition is met or not, let's say the condition uh, as we give it is to run the loop three times. Now, if the condition is true, then what it'll do is that it will go to the next pass and change the counter value to two and it will generate two outputs. The outputs could be anything. I just decided to print one. You can, it can be anything. So now it just outputted two different outputs. Now, if we see that the condition, if the condition is also true, now it will pass to the next loop. And after completing this loop, it will increase the counter variable to three and the output will show three different uh, ones. So that is how a loop works in general. So we have certain number of instructions that we want to execute for a certain number of times or for a certain condition, and that will be outputted or executed in the command window. So mainly there are two loops for any kind of programming languages, which is a for and a while. So we can use a for or a while to execute the loops. So the question becomes why there are two loops that we can execute. So the basic difference between a for and a while is that for is used while we know the number of iterations. So um, before we knew the iteration number as three and we, we can use four. Now while is, is usually used when we don't know the number of iterations, but we know a certain condition. So we don't have to specify the number of conditions there. We will just say the, the condition 
and it will always run to meet the conditions. So the basic difference between for, let's say for the variable counter that we just defined uh, is increasing from one to three, and we know the iteration number. So here in this case, four will be a better choice to use. And then uh, we can see the for loop, uh, it runs one, two, and three times. So we, we can use four for this case. For while, let's just say we define the counter variable as zero, and now we can say the counter, if the counter condition is less than three, then stop the while loop, meaning it will increase the counter variable with one until the counter becomes less than three, or un until it becomes more than three, then it will exit the while loop. So it will do the same thing as before, it will run three times because this counter variable here, zero, then after one pass, this becomes one. After two pass, it becomes two. After three pass, it becomes three. Now, as three is not less than three, so the while loop breaks and it comes out of the loop and the loop exits. So that is how we can use for and while. So these are two, two similar things, but we have demonstrated how to use similar uh, conditions for both the for and while loops. Now we will see what uh, what while loop uh, and for loop can do. Now let's assume we don't have the counter initial value as zero. If we have it one, then what happens is that it starts from one, and then as we start the while loop, is it's increased from one to two and the two to three. So it's not gonna run three times as before, it's gonna run, run two times. So as you can see, it passed one and then it passed two times and then it exits. So depending on the conditions, we don't have to specify the number of loops or uh, iterations for using a while loop, while a for loop specifically wants us to define the number of iterations. That is the basic difference. So to summarize, in this video, we have talked about what is a loop, how to use the loop as a programmer for any programming languages, and um, we will see in the future videos how to use a for loop for programming. That is all for now. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.